For over four decades, Voyager 2 has been drifting quietly into the abyss, far beyond planet's reach, past the cold edge of the solar system into the great unknown, a ghost ship guided in the 1970s by Earth's last whisper. We imagined it would fade quietly, its signal dimming into cosmic noise, but it didn't. Just recently, it sent something back not just data, not just a routine transmission, but a message that made NASA scientists pause. A sudden spike, an unexpected shift, a sharp line crossed. And with it, confirmation of something humanity had long feared but never dared to say out loud that the perimeter of our solar system is well-defined. It is a wall. And beyond it, something changes when Voyager to crossed what's known as the Heliopause, the boundary where the sun's influence ends and true interstellar space begins, it was expected to be gradual, almost poetic. Scientists thought the solar wind would fade into the interstellar medium like a slow dissolving mist. But what Voyager to detected was the opposite. The transition wasn't slow, it was sudden. One moment it was inside the sun's protective bubble, the next it was beyond it, in a place where radiation spiked by over 70%, plasma density jumped, and the very structure of the magnetic field altered. It was like stepping through a door into a completely different room. The readings were not subtle, they were abrupt, sharp, as if a membrane had been pierced. What stunned researchers most wasn't just the presence of a boundary, but the precision of it. The sun's heliosphere, once thought to bleed into space, was now revealed as a distinct, shield-like structure, one that had been holding back the chaos of the galaxy. And as Voyager to stepped through, it established that our solar system isn't just floating in space. It's protected by something until now. For decades, the idea of the heliosphere was considered theoretical, a bubble of magnetic and plasma energy shaped by the solar wind. But Voyager to showed it wasn't just theoretical, it was vital. Inside this shield, conditions are relatively stable, radiation is filtered, space weather can be controlled, and cosmic rays are diminished. But the moment Voyager to stepped out, all of that shifted. The data showed intense, chaotic magnetic flux, energy from particles, and dangerous levels of galactic radiation. Suddenly, the solar system appeared not as a lonely outpost, but as a fortress, and entering its confines meant entering an unregulated frontier. The smooth curves and soft boundaries that existed in textbooks were gone, replaced with hard numbers, jagged spikes, and terrifying implications. Voyager 2 was no longer just drifting. It was being bombarded. The sun's magnetic field had been aligned almost perfectly with the interstellar field, a phenomenon no one expected one that raised questions about how the galaxy's own structure might be shaping the space around us. The heliosphere wasn't just a field, it was a threshold, and crossing it had consequences. One of the most shocking revelations from Voyager 2's data was that the heliosphere isn't fixed. It has breath. It moves. It expands and contracts based on the sun's 11-year cycle, changing its shape and thickness as solar activity rises and falls. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 didn't cross at the same place nor at the same distance, and the differences were not random. They were shaped by the rhythm of the sun. This means that the boundary of our solar system isn't a neat sphere. It's distorted, almost comet-shaped, with pulses that ripple outward like a giant, breathing organism. At times, it stretches, at times, it recoils. And if the solar wind weakens, the boundary draws closer to home, allowing more cosmic radiation to enter the system. If it strengthens, the barrier pushes outward, shielding us more effectively. The implication is disturbing, Earth's protection isn't permanent. It fluctuates. It can fail. And Voyager 2's sharp transition into the galactic medium revealed just how thin that veil truly is. The cosmos beyond isn't empty, it's violent, unpredictable, and much closer than we imagined. Something strange happened in 2019. Voyager 2, reliable for over 40 years, went silent not for long, just for a few hours. But in those hours, every instrument went offline. No commands were issued from Earth, no updates were sent. Then, just as mysteriously as it had gone dark, the spacecraft came back, rebooted, recovered. 
The official explanation was hardware aging, possibly a minor software glitch. But buried in the technical reports were notes on unexplained electromagnetic spikes right before the blackout, fluctuations in the magnetic field, sharp surges in particle energy, albeit insignificant in comparison. The question that persisted was not simply what caused the glitch, but what Voyager had just passed through. Some scientists suggested it might be a pocket of high-energy plasma, like a ripple from a distant supernova or a shock wave from some other interstellar event. But others quietly wondered whether Voyager had crossed into a layer or zone we didn't even know existed one with properties so foreign that its presence couldn't be predicted. And if that's the case, it wasn't just a system failure, it was a response. When Voyager stepped outside the heliosphere, it began recording fluctuations in radiation levels and plasma density that didn't align with anything previously modeled. These were not merely sporadic spikes or irregularities. They were patterned, persistent, and dynamic, almost like a weather-like phenomenon. The concept that space beyond the sun's reach might contain something akin to weather was previously dismissed as poetic exaggeration. But Voyager 2 was registering waves of sudden high-energy particles, directional changes in the magnetic field, and surges in galactic rays that reverberated with an odd rhythm. At first, scientists attempted to connect these perturbations to previously known solar events, flares or coronal mass ejections that might have echoed through the heliopause. However, when those timelines did not coincide, they turned outward. The routines began aligning with distant galactic phenomena, which may be relics of supernovae or the collective force of massive stellar winds far from our system. It was as if Voyager had entered a region alive with activity, a kind of sea between stars with no visible currents and unseen tides. And now that the probe was outside the sun's protective barrier, it was fully exposed and afloat in a storm we never anticipated finding. One of the most unexpected results from Voyager 2's crossing was the close-to-perfect symmetry between the Sun's magnetic field and the galactic magnetic field beyond. This discovery left theorists in a panic. For years, turbulence was predicted by models at the heliopause, a clash of magnetic directions, a blending zone where solar and galactic forces would twist into chaos. But that's not what Voyager 2 found. The transition was smooth, too, as if the fields were already synchronized. There were the possibilities both equally unsettling. 1. The region beyond our solar system had been shaped and twisted by the flow of the sun over time, slowly sculpting itself into alignment, or the region itself was already inherently aligned. That would mean the sun and its surrounding interstellar neighborhood had evolved within a magnetic harmony, one that possibly covers a significantly larger portion of the galaxy than previously believed. It also means cosmic rays might flow in more easily when fields are aligned, creating efficient channels into our solar system during quiet solar cycles. This wasn't just a magnetic surprise. It was a paradigm shift. The concept that the structure of the galaxy may already accommodate or even anticipate the sun's magnetic reach challenges every model of interstellar interaction. Suddenly, space appeared less chaotic. It seemed organized. Voyager 2's data continued to flow. A whisper began circulating among theorists and mission insiders, one they were not prepared to record but couldn't ignore. What if the heliosphere wasn't just a boundary? What if it behaved like a checkpoint? The sharpness of the transition, the perfect field alignment, and the consistency of radiation spikes across both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 suggested not just a physical interface, but a responsive one. Some proposed the boundary might be adaptive, adjusting its intensity or location in response to pressure from either side. But a more controversial notion was that the boundary itself might serve as a kind of tripwire for the galaxy, a region where entering objects are exposed, measured, recorded. This was no claim of aliens, no assertion of intelligent design, but simply the observation that the space voyager to his arrival sounded organized, layered, reactive, and if true, that would imply that each object that leaves the solar system doesn't just leave the sun's domain. 
it announces its presence to the galaxy beyond. Voyager 2, unknowingly, may have triggered more than just measurements. It may have sent a signal which may have revealed more about us than ever before intended. Attached to Voyager 2 is a message, a golden disc etched with humanity's greetings, sounds, music, and diagrams. A beautiful attempt at interstellar diplomacy. However, on that disc are detailed instructions, how to locate Earth, how to read the disc, how to understand who we are. For decades, this was celebrated as a symbol of hope. But in light of Voyager 2's discoveries, some now see it differently. If the boundary that separates our system from the galaxy isn't a gradual fade, but a well-defined edge, if it reacts, if it watches, then what does it mean that we attached a map to our home on the very probe that pierced that edge? Are we extending a hand or revealing a vulnerability? Every time Voyager to sends a signal, we confirm our intelligence, our technology, and our location. And if someone is listening somewhere out there, or worse, responding, then the golden record may become more than a message. It may be an invitation, one we can't take back. It wasn't supposed to make it this far. It wasn't meant to send back revelations that would shake our understanding of the cosmos. And yet, here we are, decades after its launch, drifting through the cold silence of space. It has crossed a line that was never meant to be so easily crossed. And what it discovered was not a peaceful void that we once imagined. It found change. It found pressure. It found structure. It proved what many silently feared. Our solar system is not wandering aimlessly through a void. It is shielded. And outside that shield, the rules start to change. Radiation intensifies. Fields line up. Particles shift. Space and time are distorted. The boundary is firm. It's sharp. And what lies beyond it appears to be less of a sea and more like a gate, a threshold into a realm that has no regard for our gentle sun or Earth's clear skies, a realm where apocalyptic calamities rage and fields move to frequencies that we are only just beginning to comprehend. And then there's the golden record, a magnificent, reckless representation of our optimism sailing into deep space with our coordinates, our biology, our identity carved in gold. A greeting or a flare sent across a boundary we now know is far more complex and much more receptive than we ever dreamed. So now the question lingers in the silence between stars, was Voyager to merely an explorer, or was it a signal? Let us know in the comments. Do you believe Voyager to discovered something unnatural at the edge of our solar system? Is the heliosphere just a physical barrier or something more? If this video made you rethink the boundaries, 